Hi, Ray Hayden here, and I want to do a, a real quick video on the heads up display that's in the flight simulator, which is within Google Earth. Okay, down here in the lower right, we see Google Earth, and my pointer is a pointer and not a hand, and the reason for that is because I'm already in the flight simulator program. Um, and I wanted, I wanted to be already in it, and I'm actually paused. I can continue to fly around and everything else, uh, but I pause it so I can show you aspects of the heads up display that you're gonna see. And most importantly, I wanna show you this information down here uh, in the lower left. Uh, I wanna show you one other thing up here in the upper right. You can exit Flight Simulator in a couple of different ways, but one of the ways you can do it is just by simply clicking the Exit Flight Simulator button in the top hand right of the screen. Now, uh, if you wanna pause a flight at any time, just hit the space bar. And to resume flying, just hit the space bar again. Uh, one thing I wanna point out over here is this looks like text. It's not really text, it's some kind of a sign because I don't have any kind of text opened up in the uh, Flight Simulator program or Google Earth. Um, what we're looking at here in the center is actually Dodger Stadium, but uh, more importantly is the blacktop parking lot over here allows me to really see the lower left part of my screen. Uh, what I wanna show you here is um, these two horizontal lines and these two vertical lines. Looks like a big letter H kind of thing. Um, but what this is on the left, where this little diamond shaped thing is, this is a throttle. Uh, it's moving down and I'm gonna move it back up, but that's the throttle for how fast we wanna go. Um, this upper line here is gonna start moving around and then we change it into a, a control device and that moves left and right. Now that uh, banks or makes it lean to the left or to the right. And uh, this other line right here is gonna move up and down. And that's if we wanna fly up or down. And generally speaking, I'm not going into the fine details of aerodynamics in any kind of expert way. I'm just telling you, if you want to fly up, you pull the stick back towards yourself. If you want to fly down, and at this level, I highly recommend that you do not, uh, you push up and your nose will go down and you will crash and burn into this cliff right here. Anyway, so point being is uh, these are control input indicators. Um, there's not a whole lot to them. There's no labeling going on here. Uh, but everybody who uses this uh, flight, or most everybody who uses this flight simulator program understands that that's the throttle on the left. The top is whether or not you're uh, moving your stick left and right. And on the right side is whether or not you're moving your stick up and down. Now this other one, <coughs> pardon me, this other indicator isn't gonna move at all uh, because that's the rudders. If you have rudder pedals and you step on the right uh, rudder, this will slide to the right. If you have a left rudder pedal and you step on that, it, this would slide to the left. There are keyboard inputs for how to make use of that. And I'm really not sure how you do that. So no, I'm not, I'm trying a couple of keypad uh, things and, and they're not working. But uh, so, but if I had a number pad, the laptop that I'm using doesn't have the number pad off to the right of the main keyboard. So um, I don't have that option to be able to show you. So I apologize for that. Um, and with that, I'm gonna, open, I'm gonna start flying again. I'm gonna uh, put my indicator, oh, my point, let's go back to the parking lot over here on the left. Um, my pointer is a pointer, and now it's gonna be a crosshair, all right? Um, I'm gonna move that over here when I start flying again, but I wanna mention one more thing. As I'm flying in the video, you may see blurry things. Uh, maybe the scenery gets blurry or something like that. That is only something to do with how I'm recording the video. It has nothing to do with what I'm looking at in Google Earth Flight Simulator, which is very crystal clear and amazing. Um, so I just wanted to just mention that. So if you see any kind of blurriness or anything, I apologize for that. That's just in how I'm recording. So let's start flying again. Um, and I'm flying a SR-22 uh, aircraft. So I'm gonna bank to the right, and I'm gonna pull back so I can turn to the right at a pretty high clip. So you should see some blurriness. It's a lot of scenery change there. And there is downtown LA, and there's a couple of buildings that are gonna start rendering in a position. They should pop, there you go, there we go. So those things start popping up. And by the way, in flying the SR-22, I'm gonna pause here for a second. I'm gonna dive down towards the building briefly, pull back up a little bit, and pause. These buildings will pop in and look better, and they may be popping in uh, here and there while I'm in pause mode. This one here seems, yep, there's a couple other ones popping in. So uh, Google Earth is really good. Well, it will populate the area with uh, quite a number of buildings and uh, we'll still be able to crystal you know, clear see pretty much everything we want to see. So again, in the video, you'll see some blurriness and I apologize for that. That's not really there. Let me uh, unpause and fly around a little bit more uh, over the top of the buildings. And by the way, I recommend that you don't do that in real life in LA because you will end up in a lot of trouble. Now I want to 
put this thing at a 30 degree bank angle to the left and pause. All right, now this is where I'm describing the rest of the um, heads up display for us. First off, if we don't wanna see it because maybe it's blocking something, maybe we wanna see these buildings a little bit better and this little uh, set of green lines is in the way, let me make this a pointer again, uh, we can hit the letter H on our keyboard and that gets rid of the heads up display. And now we can see everything. And my pointer is still there just as happy as it can be. If I make it a control device crosshair, I can't get rid of that. Um, it kind of drives me nuts sometimes, but you know, I kind of get used to it and ignore it. Uh, but if somebody's watching the video and I'm flying around and they see this thing zipping around all over the place uh, for minor adjustments, it, you know, it, it might be confusing. But don't be confused by that. That's just me making control input moves uh, when I fly around. Uh, anyway, let's put the heads up display back over here. And on the left side, this is our airspeed. So we're doing 170 knots. Um, up here along the top is our heading indicator. Currently we're about uh, 205 degrees is our heading and we're uh, banking to the left. So we're gonna end up heading south if I continue on this path. Um, over on the right, this is 890 now. This is, it doesn't say negative 890, it says 890. If it said negative 890, that means I'm going down towards the ground at 890 feet per minute. Uh, currently I'm climbing at 890 feet per minute. So this is our rate of climb or rate of descent indicator right here. A negative number is bad, you know, unless you wanna be headed down. Uh, you know. And then uh, over here on the right is our altitude. Currently we're between 1400 and 1500 feet above sea level. It's not above the ground, it's above sea level. There's a big difference, especially when there's a 14,000 foot mountain right next to you. As a matter of fact, let me spin this around and look out the back window. There's mountains back there. <laughs> so, and they're higher than 1400 feet. So 1400 feet is not above ground level, it is above sea level, which is important because if you know there's a 14,000 foot mountain, you need to be at 14,500 feet or 15,000 feet to make sure that you clear it. And you're not gonna be, you know, if you keep this at 1400 feet or 1500 feet, you're gonna fly right into the side of the mountain. So that's why it's really important to know that this is sea level and not above ground level, which is totally different. Um, so we discussed this is our speed, this is our heading indicator, this is the rate of climb or rate of descent. If there's a minus sign out in front of it, it's a rate of descent. Um, this is our altitude. Now let's get into these items here. This uh, circular device is actually what's moving. Um, this is a triangle area that's pointing straight up towards the top of the screen. As you can see, it is pointing towards the top of the screen. This doesn't move this circular device moves. And let me explain what this is. As a matter of fact, this will actually go in a circle and move all the way around the thing. I wonder if we can try that, just to really indicate it. That'd be kind of a neat thing. Uh, make sure we got full throttle on the aircraft. And I'm gonna dive towards the ground a little bit to build up some speed, because I'm gonna try this maneuver and hopefully this thing stays on the screen the whole time. Okay, we're gonna pull up and I'm gonna roll to the right. Keep rolling, keep rolling, stay on the screen and there. Okay, so it stayed on the screen the whole time and it rolled all the way around. I'm gonna hit pause again. Now, uh, I'm gonna hit pause again. I'm gonna go back to a 30 degree bank angle to the left. All right, now I'm gonna pause again. Now this number up here, I'm gonna change this to a pointer again. Uh, it says negative. So now I am headed towards the ground at 2,150 feet. So negative 2,150 feet um, is where it is. I am closer to the ground. I'm between 900 and 1,000 feet. I'm at 9, 950 feet probably right here or 960 it looks like, 20, 40, uh, I'm at 945 feet above sea level, okay, uh, which is a difference there. Now, I wanna get into these indicators here. Um, uh, you know, let me make this a little bit neater. Okay, I want it to be in a darker area where you can see it. And I, I just actually happened to luck out and get it right here at the 20 degree mark. These are degrees, like I just said, 20 degrees. This is 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and then this is further away. This is 45 degrees and this is 60 degrees. Now, as we noticed when I did that uh, roll, that barrel roll, may have not been the smoothest one in the world, but you saw that this card will actually roll all the way around the circle that it is, all right? Um, the 10, 20, and 30 degrees are normal uh, bank angles for wings. At 20 degrees, it's uh, kind of a pretty steep, as you look at the horizon over here and down towards San Diego in the distance, uh, these, um, this angle is, is kind of steep. Normally our angles are like 10 degrees on a turn, a nice smooth turn that's comfortable for uh, our passengers would be 10 degrees. 20 degrees is maneuvering angle. 30 degrees is a definite maneuvering angle because things get kind of interesting at 30 degrees. At 45 degrees, we're at a steep angle 
and um, and things are pretty serious. We're definitely coming in for a landing uh, or, or having to do some kind of maneuver in 60 degrees uh, in a small airplane is gonna be very interesting for everybody on board. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. So we got full throttle and let's go over to 60 degrees and hold that angle for a second. Think okay, that is a very steep angle as looking out the front window here. So, you know that that's kind of a you know not not really normal uh, turning radius. And let's go back towards 10 degrees, and we'll hang on a 10 degree left bank turn. So there's 10 degrees of left bank. Uh, more buildings will populate, which is real nice. Uh, but that that kind of gives you a really good indication of what's going on here. So this indicates your bank level left or right. Uh, let's bank over to the right. And we'll go about 45 degrees here and there. All right, so there's 45 degrees bank angle. Uh, we're 20 degrees nose up. This is 10, 15, 20, 25 degrees nose up. And we're climbing at 4,950 feet at 150 knots. This is not really gonna be sustainable. So let's go ahead and drop because our little propeller airplane can't, can't quite handle that. All right. Um, Okay, so now we're, we're descending at 400 feet per minute. Uh, we're down to 1,800 feet. Uh, we're heading is a, a 210. We just dropped a zero at the end, but it's uh, south is 180 degrees. Um, 210 degrees is, is south-southwest, uh, but it's just 21. Uh, but we know it's 210 degrees. Um, this is the horizon. Zero is gonna be the horizon, all right? Minus five is five degrees nose down. Five degrees nose up. 10 degrees nose up and 10 degrees nose down way down here. So that gives you an indication of what we're looking at here. These, all of these indications give us a very good insight uh, to what we're doing, how we're doing it and where we're going. Let's head over by, uh, towards LAX and we can actually land there if, if we wanted to. It'd take us a little bit to get over there. Um, but I also wanna show you this other item on the screen. Let me drop it so you can see it better. Maybe you can see it in the water better. All right. Right in the middle of the screen here between the two zeros, there's actually an up, upside down T indication. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bounce out of Flight Simulator and I'm gonna bounce into it and choose the F-16 because there's one thing I wanna do is I wanna get the gear on there. Now we're actually gonna start out flying too, so I'm gonna pause this, all right. And um, the first thing is I'm gonna do, um, okay, good, I can. Okay, so we raised up the gear and got rid of the flaps. But I wanna point out this indication right here. Uh, we see we're going down 2,210 feet per minute, but this little upside down T is showing us our trend. So let's go ahead and back into it. And even though, watch this, watch this. I got the throttle all the way down and I'm pulling the nose, uh, the nose is up, all right? Now this little upside down T will continue to drop. If I don't make any other changes, this little T is gonna continue to drop, indicating, and as you can see, we are headed closer to the ground. So this is a very nice visual indication of what's going on if we continue our trend. Now watch, this thing will start moving up, it will continue to move up, and it will pass over to zero mark at some point <clears throat> and still move up. And this is gonna show that we're climbing and our trend is to continue climbing. All right, so that's just a very, very important tool that's available to us in the heads-up display of Flight Simulator built right into Google Earth. Now I've actually, drop the gear and I've put the flaps down completely and I killed the throttle and I'm trying to slow down. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but um, it's just kind of a fun thing to land uh, if we can. So, uh, you know, don't mind all these numbers and everything happen around here. This is just all the indications. I'm aware of what the numbers are. I glance over at them and I'm just really trying to get myself to slow down enough to have a successful landing. And to do that, I really want it to be less than about 180 knots. And uh, here's my speed over here. It's going to 210. I might make it. If I pull back a little bit, I can kind of put on the brakes a little bit that way. And here we go, good. Okay, so we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it to the runway. And I want you to notice that little indicator, okay? It's right there where my little white cross is, and now it's in the black area of the runway. That indicator is gonna show me uh, my, the quality of my approach here. And that I wanna land pretty much where that big white blob is on either side of the black mark. That's the touchdown zone at the runway. 150 knots coming down and it's gonna be a rough landing. And I'm gonna hit both of my brake buttons. The comma is a left brake. The period is a right brake. 
The proper way to uh, really steer is to use the rudder pedals. Um, however, these brake, the, the left and right brake work just as well. So anyway, so that was kind of an interesting uh, flight seeing tour of the uh, Los Angeles area. Uh, but my goal was to explain the heads up display and how you can use that in uh, flying around in the uh, free flight simulator that's built right in to Google Earth. So with that, I hope you take care and be well and I hope that you enjoyed this video. Take care.